Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in today's one we're catching up with our old friend the GTX 750 Ti. Furthermore we're testing it in combination with a cheap Pentium G6400 CPU. The Pentium is one of the cheapest processors you can buy right now and there was a time when a Pentium in pairing with this once mid-range card was all you needed for respectable frame rates in most games. Can a combo like this still hold up? Now we've covered the Pentium in comparison with an i3 a few videos ago but today we're showcasing an all-round budget experience and although I'm using 16 gigs of dual channel DDR4 it is the cheap stuff clocked at 2400 MHz. I targeted 30 FPS in single player games as it's more realistic sticking to 1080p where I could and for multiplayer titles I targeted 60 FPS. To kick things off then we have Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, which surprised me straight away. We were running the game at 70% scaling which in all fairness doesn't look too bad and we were able to hit 60 FPS on average. As always, well I'm sure most of you know the catchphrase by now but the footage was taken from a bot match but the performance figures were taken from an online game. It's just easier that way. Managing your expectations is important with a setup like this but so far and well I'm happy. Now Crisis Remastered surprised me as well to be fair. The Pentium was doing a great job here and although you may be picking up those stutters that are clearly visible on the frame time graph, I want to state now that I fix this by turning on VSync and then turning it off again. This stutter only happened if I didn't do this and I realised this only after capturing the footage. It seems as though the Pentium has a bit more to give to be fair and the 750Ti is actually the limiting factor in this case. The game is set to 1080p low but low here still actually looks pretty good so it's a nice combination of performance and visuals. Now by some miracle we were even able to hit 30 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077 albeit with a reduction once again to 70% resolution scale. There will be some noticeable performance hits which mainly occur in Night City but driving around the busiest streets themselves or out towards the countryside evens things out a little bit. Could you play the entirety of this game like this? Well, it might get frustrating, but your experience here won't be any worse than the base last gen console versions as they currently stand, put it that way, though it might not look as good visually. Fortnite at 1080p medium ran with at least 60 FPS here. The experience was pretty good overall with some dips here and there thanks to the two physical cores of course of the G6400. And on my second game of the day the system froze completely which obviously isn't ideal. I played a couple more games after this without any issues so whether or not this was hardware related or otherwise I can't confirm. I can only report on the experience that I had. It's still worth bearing in mind though as no one wants their game to crash halfway through and this isn't something that's really happened with any other hardware I've tested recently so yeah. The CPU usage in GTA 5 will shoot straight up to 100% and just sit there so it's clear that this is definitely a more processor intensive title but that has always been the case. The difference these days with GTA is that the game doesn't stutter. I remember years ago when two core processors, be it ones with four threads or not, used to give me so many issues in GTA but it's at a point now where a hyper threaded Pentium will do a fine job, even at high settings and when paired with the 750 Ti which in all honesty has always been able to do a pretty good job at running this game, even at full HD. In most of the games I've tested today, lower resolutions would obviously be better suited to the hardware, but I really wanted to push this hardware and stick to native 1920 by 1080 where I could, if it meant we could still hit 30 FPS. Mafia Definitive Edition was one such example. 1920 by 1080 and the low settings meant a surprising plus 30 FPS average, which I really wasn't expecting. The compression doesn't do it justice, but this really is a brilliant looking game, but it can also be a fairly demanding one, even at low, to be honest. Therefore, seeing 30 FPS here, not just in the countryside, but downtown as well, was a pretty unexpected outcome to say the least. Right, so in Red Dead, 
I made the mistake of enabling TAA for the captured footage. So what I decided to do was throw up the figures that I got when I turned this off. To enable high textures at 1080p, I had to edit the system file in my documents, which is super simple. It just involves manually changing the resolution to the one you want and then saving. If you have a relatively low end system, but you want to play Red Dead Redemption 2, then I'd always recommend turning everything down to low, but keeping the textures at high as this doesn't really have much of a performance impact or not as much of a performance impact as you may think, put it that way. And the game looks way better for it. 30 FPS is doable too on this hardware. The Outer Worlds unique art style means that it looks almost as good on low as it does on high, though I'm sure the differences are more noticeable in a side-by-side -side comparison. Despite the issues I sometimes have with lower end CPUs and GPUs here, I actually found the experience with the Outer Worlds to be very good. Now I did notice the occasional stutter, which mainly occurred upon entering a new area, but after the assets had loaded, the frame times stabilised and the game continued to run quite well with a decent average frame rate. Finally then, while Ubisoft's Viking blockbuster Assassin's Creed Valhalla won't start with 7 series graphics cards, Watch Dogs Legion will. And while I'll admit native 1080p was probably a bit ambitious, a 30fps average was still just about doable with the low settings. As I said before, the 750Ti is better suited to lower resolutions these days, but I thought why not push things as much as possible today, and I think the end result was still quite acceptable. The 750Ti really refuses to die, doesn't it? <laughs> I for one am glad and it's clear why this is still a popular second-hand choice. The Pentium, on the other hand, is also okay, and if you want to get one of these, it means that you're also buying into a decent upgrade path. And at the moment, Intel Socket 1200 CPUs aren't inflated in price, so there are some great deals to be found. The 750Ti has been done to death, I know, but when it refuses to die, it's always worth revisiting, especially now when so many other cards on the market, be it new or used, are so expensive. With all that said then, well, I think the 750Ti is still an okay choice if you really are on a tight budget. Now, I wouldn't recommend spending over £100 or dollars or euros or whatever on it, um, because I think that is still a little too high, but it depends what the state of the market is like where you live after all, and you could always sell it on in a few months for what is probably a similar price should you choose to upgrade or you find something um, that's a bit better and you can get a pretty good deal. But there we go, a cheap Pentium CPU and a cheap 750Ti in 2021, well, to my surprise, both are still usable, even in combination with each other. But I guess it depends on what you want to play, just don't be too ambitious with the graphic settings. As for this one then, well thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed it leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.